Hello, my name is Oscar. Welcome to this online video course in which I'll teach you the basics of modern OpenGL. In this video we'll cover math. I'm going to start off with coordinate systems, then I'm going to go to points, vertices and vectors, and lastly I'm going to cover homogeneous coordinates. A warning beforehand, there might be an information overload, so feel free to pause the video whenever you think that's appropriate. Coordinate systems. A coordinate system is a way of describing locations using numbers. Essentially, with a coordinate system, you're creating a space that you can use to position objects. Now, to do this in OpenGL, we use a thing called the Cartesian coordinate system. And what this is, is basically a grid. And you can also create a three-dimensional grid. And I've illustrated that here with the X, Y, Z drawing. Uh, it basically works like this. You have the origin of the world, which is 0, 0, 0, which means that the x value is 0, the y value is 0, and that the z value is 0. And then the further you go to the right, the more the x value increases. So this could be 10, 0, 0. The further you go upwards, the more the y value increases. So this here could be 10, or I'm sorry, 0, 10, 0. And then the z value, the further you go backward, uh, the more the z value decreases. Important to note that it decreases and that it doesn't increase. This point could be 0, 0, minus 10. Another example of a coordinate system is GPS. Using only two numbers, longitude and latitude, you can describe any location on Earth as if it were a two dimensional surface. Now, a point is a location in a coordinate system. Fairly straightforward, it's just, well, a point. You write a point as x, comma, y, comma, z. So the x value, and then the y value, and then the z value. And using a point, you can then describe any location in any coordinate system. Examples of points are camera positions, and the origin of the world, that's a point too, that's always a point. Now something entirely different is a vector, a vector has a magnitude and a direction, that's important to re remember. And you can look at a vector as the difference between two points, or, more simply, as an arrow. And it doesn't matter where the arrow starts, or where it ends, it just matters in which direction it's pointing and how long it is. Now you write a vector as x, y, z, so exactly the same way as you write a point. However, there is a difference. You can visualize this x, y, z as an arrow, and the origin of the arrow is at the origin of the world, so 0, 0, 0, and then this x, y, z, that indicates the, the tip of the arrow. You can see that as a, as a point. And then you can visualize this arrow that has a magnitude, because that's the length of the arrow, and a direction because the arrow is pointing somewhere. Now what can you use vectors for? What do they represent? Vectors can represent velocity. So say you have a player and he is walking, then he's walking with a certain speed, that's the magnitude, in a certain direction, that's the direction. But you can also have acceleration, so say you're in a car on a highway and, and the car is accelerating, then the car is accelerating in a certain direction and it's also accelerating with, with a certain magnitude. Same goes for force, and I've greyed out surface normal, because the surface normal is an exception. You see, with the surface normal, the only thing that really matters is the direction, because the sur surface normal describes in which direction the surface is pointing. So, well, the orientation of the surface, so to speak. It doesn't matter which magnitude it has, and for this we use a so-called unit vector, which is a vector with a length, a magnitude of zero. And you can extrapolate the magnitude from the notation x, y, z, and you can also do that with the direction. But I'm not going to cover that math in this math video. Okay, now for reverse x, which is very similar to a point, but there is a difference. A vertex is an intersection between two lines or line segments, 
and it's also a point. A vertex is used to describe shapes, so a triangle consists of three vertices. You can see I've drawn a triangle and I have created little red circles indicating where the vertices are. And when we say vertex, we also mean all attributes that are associated with this vertex. Vertex attributes, as they're called, can be colour or texture coordinates or normals, and we'll find more about this in further episodes. Now you write the vertex exactly in the same way as the point, just x, y, z, fairly straightforward. Now for the homogeneous coordinate, we use a homogeneous coordinate to distinguish between vectors, points and vertices, because the notation of all three is exactly the same. Okay, so a homogeneous coordinate is the fourth component of a vector vertex or point and it's called w. If it's a vector then the homogeneous coordinate is 0 and if it's a vertex or a point the homogeneous coordinate is 1. By the way the first three components are x, y and z just so you know. And then there's this example here you can see the first line the homogeneous coordinate is 0 and therefore it's a vector and in the second line the homogeneous coordinate is 1, and therefore it's a vertex or a point. Now you should understand coordinate systems, vertices, points, vectors and homogeneous coordinates. If you have any questions and remarks, you can email me, tweet me, Skype me, or of course leave a comment below this YouTube video. And these are the references I've used for this video. I hope to see you in the next episode of Beginners Open GL.